Hello, everybody. We are here with a uh, partnership with the Red Deer Aboriginal Dance Troupe and FCSS of uh, Red Deer. And we're bringing to you a program um, called Learning How to Quill with Kanisha Roan. And so I want to say hello to everybody, um, wherever you are watching in from. Just give us a shout out, give us a like, give us a comment, give us a share. We are learning how to quill today uh, in partnership with the Red Deer Aboriginal Dance Troupe. So we got uh, Kanisha Roan here today, and she's going to be uh, bringing out all her, her things and her quills and her, uh, all her knowledge of the quill work and teaching it out for everybody out here today in Facebook world. So you know what you got to do? You know, put out a like, a heart, one of those care heart buttons where you're, where you're hugging and, uh, and share this video with everybody. We're going to be learning how to quill today. Hello, Dan Class. Um, my name is Kanisha Rohn, and Marissa asked me about a couple of months ago to come do a quill class before all this uh, COVID-19 started, and I didn't hesitate. We didn't hesitate to go out and get the quills and the supplies we needed to teach a class, and I'm sorry if I'm... I have never ever did an online class before, but this is this is new to me. So hopefully it goes really good, smooth. Um, I'm gonna teach you what I was taught by my brother-in-law, uh, Yasti Perkins Killer. Um, that's my little sister, Ladybug's own Ladybug's own husband. Um, we traded techniques. I started. I started out quilling the sew down the sew down technique, so it was the zigzag and the back and forth. And then he protocoled me to teach him how to do that, and then I protocoled him to do the wrap. And it took a while. It took patience, a lot of patience, because it was hands on, and it was it was visual. And yeah, I'm really grateful for his knowledge and I passed it down to my daughters, Askew and Kendra. And Kendra is pretty good at her quill work, her, so, her sew down technique, sorry. But yeah, we're just gonna do a, like what I was taught before. Don't mind my hands. Um, I didn't go get a, a mani pedi <laughs> since this whole pandemic started. But yeah, we're just gonna do the paper technique first. And this is, pretend this is your rawhide. And it doesn't matter, cause you're starting out on paper, you're just gonna practice on this first. And this is your quill, okay. I made a point right there and you're always going to fold it this way so it'll look like this. This part's gonna stick out this way so it can stick out onto the um, to the rawhide. So you make a make your quills are always this way facing out not towards you. And I'm really, really nervous right now so don't mind me, don't mind my shaky voice. But yeah, this is supposed to be your your um, rawhide, and this is what you're gonna do. It's always gonna be facing that way like that. And do I show that camera too? Or, oh, okay. I was like, <laughs> I'm just looking at that. But yeah, your quill's always gonna look like this, so you can have, a, um, you can intertwine it. And then I'm just gonna show these guys over here. Okay, so this is your quill. Joseph, <laughs> ask you, this is your rawhide. This is your quill. And your quill is always gonna look like this. Do you see it? Yeah? Okay, and then you're just gonna wrap it around. Okay, a quill, usually a quill, maybe six centimeters will wrap like three times, maybe two, depending on the thickness. And that's where you 
overlay it like this. I'm sorry, this is how I was taught. Like, it was just practice. This is going to be the six centimeter one. Oops, sorry. Okay, see how it lays like that? Don't mind my fingers. And then your quilt at the end is going to lay like that. And then you have your other quill because you're working with so many quills and you're always going to do the same thing with every quill. It's always going to look like that. It's always going to look like a, a check mark and it's going to intertwine with that. So your quill, your other quill at the end is always going to want to have a hook and they're going to intertwine. So you have to connect them. Make sure they're, they're sturdy and tight. And that's when you rewrap your hide. So a healthy quilt will wrap. This one would probably wrap three times. And maybe twice, depending on the width of your rawhide and what you're working with. But yeah, that's it. And I'm going to show you how to tuck. It's like complicated. Okay, so you have to bend your quill. And then you have to find the end. Well, usually there's like a, a stem like sitting there and you have to tuck it under there. But since this is paper, we're just going to and then you have to tuck it. But this is just a rough copy of how I learned. So that's how, this is not how it's supposed to look, but it will look neater once we do it with the real quill. And that's the ending step? That's the ending step, the beginning and the ending. And a quill six centimeters, five centimeters, because you're not gonna show the black quill or the black part of the quill. And this is where I use a, um, a tweezers, a pointy one, but we're not going to use the, the end, the tweezers, tweezers, sorry. Um, try to make it flat as possible, but not too flat. I have a, um, a bone my dad gave me to flatten quills. But I always use tweezers because it's convenient because I don't want to like travel with like something that thick. But see, this one is a healthy one, but it's dry. So it kind of busted right there. So we'll put that aside. So does that mean it's not usable? It's not you. It can be usable if you take this end off. And if you're just going to use like um, one strand of red you can still use this part and still wrap once and then intertwine again. But this part isn't usable. Okay, so you're just going like this. Hold it and you're always working against you, not towards you. But your black part, the tip, it's facing away, away from you. Just have to do grab quills. Guys, grab some quills. <laughs> I think you guys should grab quills. Um, They're six, six centimeters is healthy and good, and five. Just wanted to do a shout out to everybody watching online. Looks like we have people from all over the place: Mexico, Alaska, uh, New Mexico, uh, Michigan, Maryland. What's up, everybody? It's so good to, to have you guys all live the here today. Got people from Idaho, all of my relations from all over. Roseville, California, what is up? Hello from Ireland. And you're just um, flattening your quill. I'm sorry if I have really rank hands. Okay. This is, oh, sorry. Sorry about the focus size. This is the flat quill you want to work with. So, we're just going like that. so that's 
a black quill there. So right and now, do the comparison. We'll right now she's that's flattening, flattening the, the quills. And that's the regular quill you want to work with. So you get a regular quill, that's and then you flatten it out with the, the okay. tweezers. And you just kind of so iron it out with the, the with the tweezers to yeah, flatten it out. But this is the one you want to work with, and you just flatten it. And again, you always work the quill toward, uh, not, not towards you, away from you. Some people use their teeth to flatten them, flat, flattening, flatten them too. So, sorry, it's been a long day. <laughs> just finished dancing. Um, but yeah, don't ever work this way, because if you do, you get a quill stuck in your finger and you cry. <laughs> mm -hmm. So some people flatten them with their, their mouth, their teeth. And the way we're doing it here is yeah. she's using the, is it the end of your tweezers? Yes, the end of my tweezers, you could flatten them. So just to be sh I'm gonna show this arm right here, this is the, and that's a, um, you could use any kind of pointy one, it's just. Yeah. Perfect, and then can you show that? And if they ha if they're like squashed like this, can you show them this part? If they're pushed together like that, like they're it's like pushed together. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can see it like it's gathered. Yeah together you don't want to just flatten it so you go from the end to the tip right here mm -hmm. and then you just push slightly not heavily and then you just glide so you don't want to break the quill again okay so and this particular quill that she's has here there's like a line in the middle so there's two yeah and it doesn't matter if it looks like that anyways because this part isn't showing in your quill work And these ones, okay, we're gonna do the hide for your for your quills. So now we got some raw hide here. Okay. So you're always where is it now, okay? There's none. And for your rawhide, because so your rawhide, you're gonna do for a, just a straight earring and for beginner class, like for online. Right now, we sent home our packages, our packages, right? Mm -hmm. um, some ladies came, got their quills, and. I told them to take four colors home with them and their base color, like their main color, is going to go first. So I usually just go with two of these, but right now we're just going to do the, the measurements. And I told them six centimeters. So they're going to, yeah. You just cut from zero to six, and then for the width, it's zero. Half, it's half. Hold on. One second, guys. Just gonna get our camera going here. Hold on one second. You can keep talking, that's all. Yeah. Oh, because it's you, right? Oh, this, you turn that off. Do I turn it off? The battery. Oh. 
Uh, from zero to six, so six centimeters. <laughs> but you're going <laughs> length is six <laughs> centimeters. Oh, is it live yet? Or no? Oh, there you go. Okay. So you want to get where her hands are. Just uh, be careful of the cords. Uh, again. It's still on. So she just me measured what was six centimeters and what was the width? The width is zero or half zero, half half a centimeter. Half a centimeter. <laughs> so point five. Yeah. So point five of a centimeter and six centimeters long, and it's for an earring, right? Yeah, it's for the earring. So basically, we're making an earring today. So if you want to cut a rawhide, six centimeters long and a half a centimeter and you'll get the length of your correct earrings size okay i'll just cut this really quick sorry about that so facebook user said what is the width and so half a centimeter and that'll be your width and you just cut it out and you'll get uh, a good length for your your earrings for your rawhide Yeah, do you have a, hold on. Oh no, I think it's real quick. I'm just gonna do this really quick and then you guys can. Hello, Osage Reg, uh, Pennsylvania, what is up? What is up, everybody? Make sure you guys uh, like and share this video as well and kind of get it out there in Facebook land. Just wanna say hello, hello, hello. Okay. That one looks good. That one looks good as well. Okay, now you're gonna, it's six right now, so you gotta make another, right here. Just mark it straight across because your quill's going across too. And that's where you just make a like a dot where your earring's gonna go, and down here. Oops. That's where your earring hook's gonna go, and down here, that's where a shell or something, like a shell earring or whatever you want to go down there. If not, you could just keep going down that way. So the length is still six Yeah, it's still six centimeters because once you make a hole in these that's that it kind of like rips and you don't want to use like a hole puncher or anything you need to use an awl an awl if you own an awl then you could just like poke it but not too deep just enough to m put the ring hook in yes here you go so you leave a little bit of room at the ends for uh earring hole and maybe like a decoration at the bottom, like a shell. Um, we can't really pause the video, guys. Right so there. if you guys are kind of lagging behind, just just know that this video is going to be posted online. So you could rewind, fast forward, pause after the video is done. So, And if you have any questions, just throw them in there and we can answer them as we go. And just know that, you know, part of this as a live video will be published so you guys could w rewind, fast forward, however you want. So just kind of follow along as you can. And uh, we're, we're going to go a, a medium speed here. And as we go. <gasps> be careful. <laughs> be careful. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty hands on, and if you pay attention, you get it. It's, it's not that co complicated. Like when I was younger, I always like, oh my God, that looks like, how do they wrap? And it's like, 
how do they put the quills together? But then once I started learning, I'm like, oh, that's how they did it real easy. But yeah, a lot of people from learn really quick. And <laughs> but yeah, we'll get started here. Okay, so my base color for this will be blue. This is dark blue. Okay, so my base color is going to be blue. And we won't use the quill, uh, the glue right away. So like I said, how that was, this is how much we want it to be. Can you see that buffalo? I don't know, can they see it? Yeah, it, it's pretty okay. good. So how I did the um, paper, that's how it's gonna be. So, so basically the, the same yeah. way that she demonstrated with the paper, now she's doing with the quill. You wanna um, make a check mark with your quill. Yeah. Can you just quickly show them how to do that again? Okay, so it's not gonna be towards you, it's always against you, like not facing you. So you just like flatten it like that. Mm -hmm. And you're always, you're still gonna use the black so it looks like a check mark. But the back, this this has to be in the back of the quill. Because it has to wrap around the hide. Run back. And okay. So the fold of the quill is gonna be on the back of the quill, like on not your side, but the far side. Can you see that? I'll just show them how right here real quick. Can you see that? Can you see it pretty good? Yeah. Let us know if you guys could see that and uh, the viewers around the world can see that little check mark that you make with the black end of the quill. So each quill will kind of have a little black ends. So if you guys could see that really good, just give us a thumbs up or uh, maybe a comment. Yeah, I'm just like, oh my god, online <laughs> class, scare me. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do that and then we're gonna begin wrapping. So this one's a really good quill. Did you guys already okay. start? Not yet? No. Okay. I'll do this one and then I'll come around and help you. They all see it online, so they're, okay. they're good. Okay, okay, so your quill is this. If you guys want to watch again real quick. Your quill. And I'm working against you this way. So this is your quill. And your black quill is always going to go up like that. And this is your rawhide. And it has to line up with the rawhide, that checkpoint, like that. And then you're gonna hold it right here. Me, I use I use a tweezer just to hold it down so it'll be easier. Then I begin wrapping it again. So you don't glue that part at all? Not yet. Okay. You don't glue, okay, I'll get to that part in a bit. Um, yeah, you just wrap that part. That's the end of your quill. Then you're gonna do another twist and your quill's gonna look like that. Does it matter if it on the same side as when you first did it? Mm, it has to be opposite. On the opposite? Yeah, okay. it has to be the opposite of the beginning. And the opposite of the ending and the opposite of the beginning again. So it's another check, it's like a check mark with your quill. So you're intertwining them like that. Okay. Oh, okay. And then it has to be tight so it can wrap. And still no glue. And still no glue. Oh, wow. 
And that's where you keep wrapping. You can keep wrapping. Keep going and keep going. Nice. The tuck part, I'll show you again with that little thing, with the, the real foil. But yeah, you just, this is just a demonstration of the bigger part. <laughs> but yeah, you just tuck it. So those of you guys are who are just joining into the video, we're learning how to quill and we're kind of demonstrating how it looks like uh, if you were using paper. So now we're going to go on to the real thing and use some real quills. Okay. Oops, sorry. Nervous, nervous. <laughs> See that one? Me, yeah, I just usually, because it is healthy, I'll just clip it. But I want to use my teeth, though. And then your intertwine again is like that. If anybody can see that part, I'm so sorry. Keep going. See, even though it has the, doesn't matter how long the black part is because it's gonna hide anyway. Still like that. Intertwine. See, this one had three, so it wrapped three times. And that's how the back should look the intertwine. Okay, and then, oh my God. And then we did that part again. So my base color was blue and then I'm just gonna go in with red now. And then that's the check mark. It's always, always call it a check mark. But it's always, oops, sorry. Always gonna look like that. And I don't know why it's staying. But it's always gonna look like that. Because you're gonna intertwine it with this quill. And it goes under. And then you line it up on the back? Yeah. Then you line it up on the back. Sorry if I have gross fingers. <laughs> but that one went three times too. And you're intertwined again. And then I'll come around to help you guys in a bit. Let me finish this one. Ow! Oh my god! <laughs> no. <laughs> then it's <laughs> intertwined again. And I'm gonna add my blue or my white and my background color and then I'll tuck it to end it. You don't want to press too hard on your quill because you might bust it or break it. We will. They did. Okay. See, this one had three. And you always want to um, get your quills to have a three point or a two point and then three. What does that mean? 
like there's two there's five at the bottom here you could have five like it could be it can be odd or even okay. it just depends on like the color you want like which color you want to show more okay. so the red I added more in the white I added more okay. just to make it pop okay and then blue Again, um, okay, so we're going to end this one. So this one, you really want to get a, a good view. Okay, see the end mm -hmm. where the point is? That's where we're going to end it. Okay, so it doesn't need to wrap that many times then? Um, I'm still going to wrap it twice because okay. we will still have enough room to get to there. Okay. And even if you still have a lot of room, you could still snip the rawhide. Okay, and we'll use the scissors. See these? Mm -hmm. These are the big are the ends and the beginnings. So you're just gonna you're gonna go behind them, okay. and then so it's you just tuck. Going, see? So it's going. It's back. touching the rod. Yeah, it's okay. going back into the quill. So that would be the end, and then this is the finish. Wow. Then you could just like cut like the excess rawhide off if you don't want it to show that much, but leave that much for your earring clips and your clasps. That's one earring, and then we could work on this one. Can, can we go around first? Yeah, I'll go around and. Check it out real quick. <laughs> we have some in the car. Yeah. This way. Okay, hold it this way. Are you left-handed or right-handed? Okay. So you're just going to go like this. If you're right-handed, it's always going to go down, but you're switching it up. Anyway. So right now, we're just kind of going around and helping everybody out. Um, hopefully, everyone's doing good. So I'm going to take the time just to give everyone some shout-outs. Um, hello, Luann, watching from uh, Wis, probably Wisconsin, I'm, s I'm thinking. Um, if you guys want to just uh, kind of let us know where you're watching from. Hello from, watching from Marcus Hook, Pennsylvania. What is up? What is up? Uh, we got Alaska in the house. We got San Diego. What is up? Marie from Colorado. Just want to say hello. How are you doing? Um, trying to see. Roseville, California. Helen, how's it going? Thank you for tuning in. We got Candy from Idaho. And we got Kashina. Hello from Prairie Island, Minnesota. Thank you guys for, for tuning in. Uh, Connie, Christmas, Michigan. Uh, what else? Joshua, hello from San Felipe, Pueblo, New Mexico. How's it going, everybody out there? Just want to say also, you know, stay safe out there. Wash your hands. Um, you know, we want to prepare for this uh, second wave that's already in the news. So hopefully everybody is uh, staying safe out there. Hi from Hickory, North Carolina. Uh, what's up, Wendy, CO? 
uh red man where could i order some quills to teach myself very interesting uh kanisha do you know where they could get quills like let's say if there, is there anywhere online that maybe um, they could buy it from from the states you can order from blue chips blue chips, blue chips is pretty good. so blue chips just do a google search if you're in the united states and for canada i always go to wild west gallery and if you're in canada uh go check out wild west gallery his name is perry uh, you guys could see him on facebook so you guys could check out Facebook, um, Wild West Gallery. Uh, he'll ship it out to you. And Blue Chips in the United States of America. Just uh, do a Google search and you will find some places to get some some quills for your guys' self. Uh, they come in so many different colors. Uh, greetings from s Southwest Florida. What is up? Uh, American in Australia. That's Debbie. How's it going? Deb Hoffman from Arizona. What is up? What is up? Uh, we got Madonna Whiteman from Oklahoma. How's it going, guys? Uh, Jacqueline from Iowa. Lisa, all the way from Red Lake Nation. Uh, who? Why you? Why ya? From Texas. We got Jackie coming in from Wyoming. Uh, Arthur from Colorado Springs. So good to to have all you guys online. Julie from Huma, Louisiana. Nelson Thomas from BC, Canada. Uh, Buzu. Hello from Oregon, Terry says. So it's right on. Uh, how's it going? Going to take. Go, how is it going? Is going to take to make the quill? I'm not sure what that means, but uh, what is up? <laughs> uh, hello from Pennsylvania. So let's see, yeah, lots of comments, a bunch of people online. It's so good to have all you guys here today. Um, some more showing up, upstate New York, North Pole, Alaska. Wow, amazing. Uh, Valerie from Bell Gardens, California. Uh, Daniel from the Piro Pueblo tribe, Las Cruces. And uh, cool. Sorry, I, I might not say the names as good, so this is good. Thank you. He says, thank you guys so much for watching. We're just kind of going around and uh, and helping our participants here. And hopefully you guys are online. Um, maybe you had some quills laying around and you didn't know what to do with them. Uh, now's, now's a chance to, you know, to put some artwork in place. And, you know, while we're at home in quarantine to to bring out that artistic side of you and make some cool things. I know uh, reading about the Nez Pierce is one of the books I'm reading right now. Uh, they used to adorn themselves in a lot of quill work. And, you know, quill work goes back many, many centuries. So it's good to, to keep these old ways active. Elizabeth uh, Pembroke, North Carolina, I believe. What's up? Jeanette Mayas. Hello from Virginia. And, you know, if anyone has any questions or stuck, just throw that in the comment box. We'll, we have the expert here right now. She uh, had a lot of teachings passed down to her and would like to pass them down to you guys. So if you had any questions when it comes to quill work, let us know. I know we use the, the porcupine for many things. If you guys see the head roaches and powwows, the hair of the, the porcupine will be on the head roach. And a lot of that's significant. Um, signifies aggression you know a lot of the warriors would wear those roaches so you guys could see them when you're dancing pow all the pow dancers the men they have the the porcupine hair on their roaches so hello helen says from kincholio michigan i think so hopefully that's right uh what is up thank you for tuning in hit that like button hit that heart button share button that wow button whatever you, you want to do and uh, leave a comment and uh, hopefully you guys are learning a lot today we we work really hard to bring all these teachings to you guys and thank uh, shout out to red deer aboriginal dance troupe and the the board members for for making this happen here today where we could uh, learn something new today um also if there's any other workshops you guys kind of want to learn, let's say it's drum making or bead work or anything like that, and you want to learn that, throw that in the comments so we know how to move forward and bring you guys kind of what you guys are wanting to learn. And we really, really, really w love doing this, anything within our indigenous culture. So Blue Chips in USA, 
Wild West Gallery. It was also also still on Hyde, Moscow Hides and Furs. So Lucinia is basically just a lot, helping everybody know where to get all this material. So Blue Chips in USA, Wild West Gallery on Facebook. You know, check them out, Google them, and you will find how to get these ma materials. So hello from Georgia, v Vicky says, and I am Lakota living in Maine looking to learn my heritage. Love this. Right on, Maury. Good to hear. Good to know that. Um, Debbie says, how to work with feathers and leather. Awesome. Um, for feather work, if you go to powertimes.ca, we have a whole bustle making course from start to finish. If you want to learn some of that kind of feather work, we have that already in place. And just go to um, one of the tabs there. It says uh, training. And you could go to feather work and sign up for a free working class to do feather work. But definitely, so Marissa, people want to learn about leather in the future and also working with feathers. So something that we could bring to everybody out there. Um, I do not know how to do the second layer. So we're going to be making the second, um, uh, what is it called? The second earring. And you could, we're going to go over how to do the second layer and how to add uh, a second quill onto your first quill so uh, we're gonna have that in place so whenever Kanisha is ready she'll she'll come and um, teach again kind of repeat the steps for everybody on her second uh, earring for everyone to learn Helen says I love to bead many things with bead but I cannot figure out how to loom oh loom bead work for sure how to make bracelets something for sure we'll, we'll put on the the agenda for the future and silver work, yet yeah, we have all these people that know these these things, so we will get all that to you guys. Awesome. So right now, you know, we got all our participants just kind of working on that, wrapping the quills and adding the second quills, third quills, making their color scheme. Sometimes people use colors based on their family, based on their clans, wherever they're from. Uh, a lot of the colors will have a significance to them. So um, other than that, you know, now people just use their favorite colors as well, something that they like, it's something that will match their outfit, something that will match even just their ribbon skirt dresses or even just what they, what they buy at... Uh, Forever 21 or wherever yeah. they buy clothes from. So, <laughs> um, Luana says, Luan says, I love if that these gifts of skill and knowledge is shared. I believe that it's the way we don't keep them to ourselves. That's very true. So, you know, with that teaching, everyone hit that share button so that your influence and your friends and family can learn all this beautiful teachings as well. And that'd be really, really awesome. And hashtag Red Deer Aboriginal Dance Troupe as well. Give them a shout out. Uh, they're a small um, indigenous group in Alberta who basically is sponsoring this so everyone could learn how to quill. So I want to do a shout out to Red Deer Aboriginal Dance Troupe and say thank you so much for allowing this to be uh, broadcast online for everyone to learn how to, to quill today. Right on, right on. going like that until we get to the end and I'll show you a healthy quill this is good okay yeah these are good the skinnier ones are good the bigger ones are good for like one time wrap like just uh, one if you're only using one color But yeah, these are good. These are a good size. And when you're flattening, try use your middle finger, cause, and then just lightly glide straight across to flat. Me unplug the um.
Okay, we could start the, the second one. One, two, three, four, five, okay. Okay, this is the first one, and the back should look like that with all your intertwine twisting the wrap. So people who are just having trouble with add, um, adding the second color to us. Oh, adding the second color? So after you do the one, mm -hmm. they just want to do that over again. Kind of okay. Maybe it's a little bit slower on that side. Did I just go really fast? <laughs> Okay. And you're gently gliding it to flatten. You don't want to go too rough. Did I add yellow? Yes, I did. My fingers and my thumb get really numb, like after a while. I think it's because of the bigger quills. It goes like that. And then blue, oh no, white. A lot of people like leaving the black part so it can just like leave like a line going straight down. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just to make it. Like a yeah, and some people just use a straight color, mm -hmm. so it it isn't showing any of the black. Okay, so this one will wrap like three times, and I don't know where. It's yeah, because it's long. Yeah. These are the ones. One, these are the best ones to work with. Uh, did you tuck? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> did you tuck it? Okay. Yeah, you just like, I'll, Askew will show you that part. Not with that. There's a um, brush. And where, where the beginning is? Where you started, where you started from the beginning, that's where you start because it won't like um, how un unravel? yeah it won't unravel. Then you just go straight up, but when you get to the end, that's where you dab it a little thicker so it'll gather underneath and it won't unravel. You don't put it on top. You don't put it on top here. In the back. I actually seen some people do that. Like, I don't even know. Okay, we're gonna get started here. Joseph. This is the second part of the earring, and do I go slow or okay? Just for the first part at least. Okay. And then when you add the second part. Okay. Mine's supposed to look like like that. See that one had three. Four. So we only need one of these blues because it's already four and now you want to make it five. So I wouldn't use this. I would use, I would use this one just to finish it off. So you don't want, because you don't want to waste any of the quills. Mm. So 
So that's how it's supposed to look. Your intertwines supposed to look like that. Okay, so make sure it's secure, tight, and then wrap again. And you're only using once and you're repeating the second step again. Do you leave that end as long as it is? Or yeah, you, you can because you're, you want, I don't know if you want thickness or if you want flat, but that's how I do mine. Because you don't want to waste anything. Yeah. You don't like really want to waste any of the quills, but some people will snip it off. I just keep going. So we're using red and it's three times, so. Okay, wait. I'm gonna try to wrap it three times. Okay. And it doesn't really matter too if you leave that black part there too. Because it's still part of your quill work. And you want to be unique about it too. Okay, let me see. That one's going to be a little thin. I'll grab a thicker one. I don't know if I need a white, a longer weight. Hold on. So one of our viewers asked, uh, does the quill have to be wet damp? <laughs> Some do. If you're doing it so down, if you're sewing down, if you're tacking down the quill, some of them can be soaked. Mm -hmm. And it just depends on how you work with quills. Me, I, I just leave them as is. But some people do dampen them, like they, they'll leave them in like warm water. Not too long, because if you leave them in the water and they're flat like this, all that fat is gonna come out when you flatten them. And, and you don't want that to happen. Does that make it harder to work with, or mm, no? They'll it'll the quill will tear and it won't oh, last okay. long. All right. So kind of the question, if you guys in here was, um, you know, a lot of, sometimes they'll they'll dampen it if you're gonna tack them down. Uh, different style of uh, quill work. So this depends Turn on how you, how you're working with your quill. And um, if you leave them in water for too long, the fat kind of comes out of the quill and makes it. Uh, the quality of it not last as long, so hopefully that helped out, uh, Marcy. <clears throat> when, uh, oh yeah, we already had that one up. Uh, Kathleen from Alaska, just curious right on. Uh, and Aaron says pretty color, so uh, let's try to get this to a, a, a thousand <laughs> likes. If we could get a thousand likes, man, that'd be so sweet. I'll hit that like button and share button and hopefully we can get this to a thousand likes these two that was the beginning and that's the no this is the beginning and that's the end so you're gonna just trying to make it and you're tucking and there you go And that's how it should look when it's done. There's the beginning and there's the end. So hopefully you guys could see that. That's a, a finished, uh, would, would, it would be like an earring. So you guys could use this for an earring. 
So if they're doing lines, lines of this, like, let's say they're making a cuff, how do they, do they just sew it together or how do they do it side by side by side? When you're doing a cuff, your rawhide, you're going to measure your cuff and you're always going to make it uh, a centimeter long on both ends because you're still going to have to sew the ends and keep going. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people use sinew and a lot of people use like just the nylon thread um it depends it's just like different quill workers have different techniques mm -hmm. on how they make their quill work but i'll use um nylon thread and yeah i just try not to make the um the thread noticeable yeah nice but yeah it if i wanted to make cuffs i would measure it uh, half a centimeter on both ends just to have that extra and for like the um how would you say it like the the banding to cover it okay I don't know how I don't know I, I, I've never made cuffs before I only made um Something for a future advanced class. We'll have yeah. to uh, bring her back and uh, do uh, this. And this right now, we're just learning basic quill work, everybody. And if you're just tuning in, um, bring your quill. This will be quill published, work. and so you guys could rewind, fast forward. Yeah. Uh, but you know, hit that share button, hit that like button. Yeah, Let's. We'd love to get this to about a hundred, a uh, hundred, actually a thousand likes. Yeah, so if you. Yours you put your like button that would really 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 help uh we're gonna show some of the students work uh kind of what they were doing and uh, kind of the, the their designs that they decided to ch to go with um come put it down on the on that piece of paper there and you can get a good view of some of the work that that was done <coughs> So there's the back end of it, and the reason why we put the back end up is because he just put the super glue down, and I think that's the next step we're going to show everybody is how to how to put the glue down to make sure it all stays in place. Okay, I need. Can I borrow your glue? Huh? Can I use? Oh, I'll use his. So we're just going to show the how to put the glue now down so everything stays in place and you have a long lasting piece of art some indigenous art okay don't laugh because this is what i use <laughs> i use gorilla glue and it's the paintbrush kind like a nail polish and yeah i use that kind i also use super glue i don't use tacky glue because that doesn't really that doesn't really hold it down no I already tried that like I tried to like make it look as glossy as they could but no because they're quills and they're gonna age and they're gonna break depends on how you clean like keep care of them I'm just measuring those out mm. Keep them fresh. A lot of people say to use bear grease, like to rub them on your stuff, but I don't know. I'm not too sure. Holy, this is kind of too thick. Oh. This isn't working. I'm going to try this one. He'll have an outfit next week. Yeah. Uh -uh. <laughs> I need to know how to do polka dots now. Okay. So why do we put the glue on? So it won't unravel. Mm -hmm. So we're putting the glue on so it doesn't unravel all your, your weaving that you just did. Yeah. So you want to keep it looking like this and not unraveled. Oh, sorry. So that's the back. This is the beginning and this is the end. I'm not left-handed. Okay, so this is the end, or the beginning. Oops, sorry. I 
need to stop too long. So this is the end, and you're just gonna put the glue there. Does it matter what end you start from? Mm, it doesn't matter because you're you want to get both ends secure, like the glue. But don't try to wear your earrings like right away. <laughs> They'll just stick to you. Cool. Okay, yeah, it's just, it's really simple and if you pay attention and you want to learn, you'll get it done. But yeah, that's just the glue part. It's kind of thick. I think it's sat for a while. Oh, really? Yeah, cause look, it's kind of like gooey. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, so we had one of our online viewers send in a picture and one of our online viewers, this is some of their work. So thank you for everyone who is online right now and they're, they're following along. And so this is one of our online viewers and she sent in a picture. So if you wanna send in a picture of your work, go to Red Deer. Aboriginal Dance Troupe on Facebook. Send a picture of your work if you're working online and show us some of your work and we'll show it off to everybody else here today. This one's Joseph. And this one oh. we're showing right now is Joseph's. And he just sat here and he just... And he just did it here today, which is awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> but yes, if you want to quill... You have Hold to pay on, attention guys. and then, yeah, just just focus on the wrapping technique, the tucking technique, and it's really simple. It's really good work. It keeps you busy and your patience too. It's, for, it's good for it's good for the soul. So we're just getting the camera going here. Hold on, guys. No, it's me. Sorry, I hit the I hit the cord. There you go. We're we're good. But yeah, these are finished products, and we already had that girl do hers. And yeah, I don't know what else to say. It's pretty much hands-on, and whatever you learned here, that's pretty much mm -hmm. pretty so much everything. How long do we just let it dry all night? Um, or? No, they dry right away. If you want want them to dry quickly, you just sway them around. <laughs> Or go put them, like, put them on a dashboard. No, just <laughs> kidding. Like, just let them sit. And then that's this part right here. At the end, that's where you, if you have an awl, I suggest you, like. Is it easy to poke a thing? hole with an awl? Yeah, on with the, 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 the awl, okay. sorry. But don't use a hole puncher. You'll, you'll make, mm -hmm. make a, like, a bigger hole and it'll rip the rawhide right away. So when you guys are making your earrings, uh, that little space that you left in. You could put, um, do we have those little earring hook thingies? Can you grab me one of those? Okay, oh, so you're gonna need, <gasps> I was like, oh my God, I spilled them all. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna move these aside. With the ends, you're gonna get these kind of rings for the top and the bottom. And where could uh, people get the, the earring parts? Uh, you could get them at Michael's. If you're from Canada, you could get them from Michael's or you're like your Walmart, if they still sell their arts and crafts. I'm not too sure. I haven't seen anything in Walmart for a while. Um, yeah, your local bead store or whatever. Mm -hmm. I go to Wild West. So just kind of look up uh, crafting stores, bead stores, uh, Walmart, if they have the crafting s uh, section to look for the little hoops for your earrings. Okay, so... 
These are for the bottom. So in total, you're going to need two for the top because you want this one to go this way and you want, see, you want them to go, hold on. You want them to go this way so your ear and hook would sit the opposite. And that's why I left a lot of space there. So this can go in there. Okay. And then, yeah, just your local craft store, you can get all these, all these little rings. So we had a question come in that says, what is the tool we punched the hole with again? All. So it's called an all. I don't have one. I left mine at home. We don't have one. It's like um, a little pointy tool and you just kind of, do you just push down on it? Or yeah. How, and yeah you, you just push down on it. You don't, just hold this part and then just push down, like, just to make the hole go through. You don't want to use a hole puncher because that's a no-no. Use an awl or something pointy like, like this, I guess. I don't know. Wait. It has to be something pointy anyway. A sh something pointy. I use an awl. So if you all don't you own an all, I suggest you go get one. Can you try it with your sure, I can try. Wait till the thing dries, cause it might stick to my. Is it dry? Yours ain't dry yet either. Um, ask you. Can I see your? Did you? Okay. So she's going to show how to make a hole um, on one of the extra pieces of rawhide, kind of with a pointy tool. An awl, <laughs> she's not using the right tool. Usually you'll use an awl, but now she's using a, a pointy. Uh, I use a tweezers. Tweezers. So. No, this one's good. You want to make your hole before you start quilling, though. And then just go on the other side and then do the same. So that's something they would do before they even start that? Yeah. First step? They could, and I always do mine at the last. Okay. Yeah. Oops, sorry. But yeah, you're... asked uh, where do you get the rawhide from again I get it at Wild West Gallery <laughs> <laughs> that's where I get most of mm -hmm. my crafting stuff that's yeah we get our stuff there if you guys go on Facebook and and do a search for Wild West Gallery um, pretty or Perry well, how do you say his last Perry name Batush. Batush. <laughs> Perry um, look at look it up and message them I, I'm I'm pretty sure he he also uh, ships out to America, so you guys could check that out. Yeah, pretty much that's where we get all our supplies. Like I get my quills from there, and the rawhide too. So yeah, everything from there except the glue. I get I get it at Walmart or Canadian Tire, and the tweezers too. I'm not too sure if a lot of people like working with tweezers. I like working with tweezers because I find it to be, uh -oh. be a little bit better. So one second, guys. Just going to plug in the our system here so it doesn't power out on you guys. Joe, go ahead. But yes, can I'll grab the. Um. Okay, 
Okay, Joseph seems to be a little bit dry. So we're just gonna, is the black at the bottom or at the top? The bottom. Okay, excuse me. <gasps> Do we have a, um, a needle nose pliers? Oh, yes, there is. Oh my gosh. Okay, thank you. Bring it. Buffalo, you want to come hold this? Oops, sorry. No, that. <laughs> you guys are just standing there. <laughs> oh my goodness. His got stuck to my pan. Make sure the glue is dried when you guys are doing this. Do these even have clamp? Oh, do they? I don't think so. Look, I think you have to cut it. Oh, yeah, <gasps> um, which ones are her ugly scissors? <laughs> because we're gonna have to cut this. They don't have clamps. And you're, you want to get these that have already have a, um, a cut in them. These ones don't have a cut. And you don't want to ruin your scissors. Or your, you could use a pliers, but we don't have one. We only have this little tiny, this tiny thing. You know these earring clamps? The one you just had is up right up. Oh, that was one time you said. Oh, you just showed me. Yeah, yeah okay. those ones. Okay. Can, Take it real? Oh, can I use them? Because <laughs> these ones. <laughs> these ones don't have. The opening? Yeah, they don't have the opening. Okay, those ones have. Yeah, this one's going to need to dry a little more. My fingers are getting really sticky. Okay, is yours dry? No? Okay, this one seems to be dry. We'll try this one, guys. That one should be good. And then you're just going to use the end of that just to make it the hole a little more wider. Because you don't have an all. See? And it's. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry if I keep moving.
And then you could use one of these because they don't have an opening. If you make jewelry, you will have no problem. Um, do you guys have a, can I borrow your other one? The other, um, thing like that? Yeah. Sure. So that's how your, it's going to look. I'll put it down here so you can see better. That's how your earring should look. Yes, I just call them circles. <laughs> I just call them circles. Oh my God. I don't think nothing major fell off. Nothing. Earring hooks. Oh, okay. So Roy asked, you know, where are you located? We are right now in central Alberta in Canada. So thank everybody who's watching all over the world, staying connected online. And that's how the beautiful Oops. earring looks with the hooks in. Which way did it go? Okay. Do you just close off that hook at the end there? Yep. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. These aren't the kind of players I work with. I know. You want a needle nose, guys. This is different. Okay. There's your first earring. And then the bottom, you could do the same too. You could just like mark it in the back, but not in front, just not to make the, the mark noticeable. But that is your first earring. Right? <laughs> Those ones? I know my fingers are just like all... They have, um... No, no, not callus. <laughs> that too. <laughs> not that. The... <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> um, what's it called? The stuff. Gorilla glue. <laughs> Can't take you nowhere. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to turn this and then just like make it touch so I can get rid of most of the glue. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. So... We're turning it this way. If you have rhinestones too, you could like bling out your your quill work. Yeah, I throw the right like just where I want it to look like shiny, like just to make the colors pop. But I don't. I just like leave like a little dab of glue. Not a whole bunch. Yeah, that's a lot of glue on my fingers. And this is, you're going to have a lot of dye on your hands and your fingers. The best way to get rid of it is 
a little bit of nail polish, or not nail polish, um, nail polish remover. Not a lot, just rub it where the, the dye parts are. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Hold on, hold on. It still has glue on there. Just don't want it to get. Yeah, this is a whole, whole different <laughs> tool I'm working with. Hold on. Oh my god. Up. It's focusing on something else. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. When you're working with this, make sure your glue is dry. Me, I'm just trying to make it as quick as possible. But yeah, make sure you use a needle nose plier. This one is kind of difficult. Oh my gosh. Ah. <clears throat> May I just have a whole case of tools in the vehicle? Okay, I'm, I'm just going to use this, because I can't do that. There we go. And then just hold it there. And for those ladies that took these little, these little clamps, for for this um, class, you're gonna have to get a wire cutter or something to like clamp it. Or scissors, if you don't, if you have like a really ugly scissors, you're gonna have to clamp that because there's no openings to it. Yeah. Sorry, Buffalo. <gasps> See, look, that came off. Hold on, guys. This clamp thingy. Clamp thingy. Okay. There was a problem. There was the big opening right there. Okay. It's a lot of work, guys. It looks easy, but it's not. <laughs> there we go. Okay. There's your first pair of quilled earrings. I'm gonna let Joseph dry because my fingers are like getting really thick with glue. <laughs> if you guys like what you see, you know, give us a, a heart button, a like, thumbs up, and uh, share this video so everyone else could learn this beautiful art of cool work. Joseph, you could um, focus on Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph, I'm having a bingo. <laughs> so if you guys want to get these, uh, we're selling raffle tickets. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, 
Uh, Kanisha, uh, we have a Teresa says, thank you so much. I really appreciate you teaching all of us here today. No problem. Thanks for inviting me. And I, I appreciate the patience. And that is our, our earrings, beautiful finished earrings. Um, we have uh, commenters coming in saying thank you very much. So awesome. And I think we're at our finish line here. We're going to kind of bring this in for a landing and say goodbye. Good night to everybody here. We love you all. Thank you. We'll be here for a while, but if you still have questions. Thank you so much. We're going to let the camera roll. Just uh, if you had any questions, um, just feel free to throw them in the comment box and. While well, everyone here is kind of finishing up their quill work, uh, we'll leave it on for a little bit and uh, answer any questions that you guys have. Hold on. <clears throat> I don't know, like that. All right, can, are you gonna stand there and? Are you sure? <laughs> okay. And these ones are Joseph's. $900. Joseph can finish his earring part off, and we have an, a couple of them in class. Three of them almost on the home stretch. Almost there. Oh, do you start another one? Show up. Come show the quills, Buffalo. Can he come this way? Uh, just as far as this cord allows, so. Okay. Also, uh, people will have to bring their work this way. Oh yeah. So we're gonna show the difference between a good quill and a not so good quill. Do you have any more white paper? I need to move across. Get in some white paper sheets. Printing okay. paper. Just one, yeah. Okay, we're gonna grab some quills and show you what's good and what's not. So. Yeah. yeah, those can go in. Sorry, Buffalo. I'll clean up my mess. <laughs> okay. This is a really healthy quill. Not too big, not too thick. The length is really good. It can probably wrap around three times. And that one, I'm gonna show you how long that one is. Six. And these ones are also good. These are really healthy to work with. If you're doing big projects like um, scalp locks, these are really good. Makes the job faster. And if you're gonna work with circle earrings, like if you're gonna work with circle ones, the skinny ones are the best ones to wrap because it has, has a curve. The circle is kind of um, difficult to make them overlap or straight like this because this is what you want on your quill on your earring is it is for this to be flat and round these black parts right here are the end of the quill and i personally think those make the earrings look unique if you use those two it's not sloppy or anything. It's just different people just make their quill work different from I do. And hold on. Here's another good quill. The longer the better. The short and thick ones are good for bigger projects. 
these ones, these skinnier ones, are good for um, doing patterns, like uh, weaving. Those are good for weaving. But yeah, if you're going to quill, I suggest you get this size quill. I'll show you. That's the size you want, and the length, too, is really good. But yeah, can you show those? Like, go up? Oh, really? Can you go up like this? Okay. These are the quills we purchased, or Marissa purchased, at Wild West Gallery. And <coughs> another bead store, I'm pretty sure she did. I'm not too sure. But yeah, these were all purchased at Wild West Gallery. He sells them for $10 a bag. And they're... Some of them come in different colors, depending on what color you get. But this is what we all work with. What I all work with. Oh, and you want to work with this kind of rawhide. It's, it could either work with elk or deer, but this is the rawhide I work with. I don't work with the um, the white par flash. I work with the the real the real deal. This is better. It's thin. Some of it can be thick, but the thin part, the thin. The thinner the hide, the fast, fast, faster you can do your, your earrings. But yeah, we got, Marissa got all this supplies at um, Wild West and was Bear Paw, right? Yeah, yeah. Bear Paw. But the raw hide we got up. Wild West and most of the quills at Perry's. Both great crafting stores, so if you're from Canada, yes, check them out. Yes, sir. This is the kind of glue I use, make sure it's fresh. I work on, I work with that. It has to be a, sh a sharp, sharp tweezers, jump rings, <laughs> I don't know what to call them. Yeah, that's pretty much all the supplies you need for quilling, so rawhide, quills, glue, and tweezers, that's what I use. And for thread, like if I'm sewing down thread or quill work onto something, I use, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's not like a, a beading thread. It's, I forget what it's called. It's not beading thread, but I'll use beading thread if I really have to, but I use the plastic thread. What's it called again? Does anybody know? <laughs> that see-through thread, that plastic thread. Anyways, not fishing line. It's, I forget what it's called. Yes, transparent thread. It's like really dazed. Yes. Transparent thread or beading thread, nylon thread. But yeah, if you have any more questions, we're here for a little bit longer. I don't 
don't know how this goes. Oops. You can put it right here. Down. There you guys go. A beautiful set of quill work, uh, basic quilling. And you can kind of get uh, as creative as you want with this basic style and kind of ask questions from other quill workers on, on how to do more advanced things. And hopefully maybe we could bring Kanisha out uh, later on in the year to do a more advanced training. Now that we got this basic uh, quill work uh, done and the teachings all set out, on video and i'd like to say you know thank you to all the people who stayed on with us you know we had over a hundred people on throughout the whole time which was really awesome and we're gonna just uh show it on here and if uh kind of let it roll for a little bit seeing if any questions kind of come through uh we kind of shared with you all the supplies that you needed for this some raw hides some quills different colors um I've got some glue with the brush, so the blush, brush glue and uh, the earrings to hook on. So hopefully that, that all helped you. We let you guys know exactly where to, to order all this stuff. If you did a, a Facebook search or a Google search for Wild West Gallery. And what was the other one? Blue chips? or um, For the for American you, yeah. side, it's blue chips. Oh, no, 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 no. Buffalo chips. Buffalo sorry. chips, sorry. So if you are on the American side, uh, kind of look up uh, Buffalo chips. Are they on Facebook as well? Or? I have no idea. I, they probably, they should be. They might be. If not, you could check out their website yes. and order some quills. How much does like, a bag of quills usually go for, you know? For the Ziploc, um, I forget how many ounces they are, but a Ziploc for, from Perry's is $10. So you get a, a good bag for about ten dollars Canadian. The Canadian side is ten, and um, yeah, all the dyed the dyed ones are ten, and I'm pretty sure the naturals are seven. So if you don't get it dyed and it's natural color white, uh, about seven dollars for that. So you get a Ziploc a bag full of bee, uh, quills and enough to do a fair amount of earrings for yourself at home. So there you guys have it, right on, right on. Um, just want to say thank you guys again for for tuning in, and just kind of let it roll a little a little bit, and hopefully at home everyone uh, figured out how to do this. If you came and picked up a a, a quilling kit from us, um, if you would like to order a quill kit, you know, go to Red Deer Aboriginal Dance Troop and message them and perhaps we can get you a, a package that you could you could buy and we could ship out to you everything you would kind of need for for an earring set with this video just kind of do a search for red deer aboriginal dance troop we're, we're on facebook kind of send a message and say hey i would like one of those kits that you guys have and um we could do uh, something where you send through a paypal or transfer or something like that we'll figure it out and we'll send you a kit that you guys can make your earrings from home. That way you're not searching all over online for all the stuff. And we could supply you with uh, some colors and things like that. So hit us up on, on Facebook as well. And figure out how to get a kit to you guys so you guys can follow along at home. The only thing that we might not be able to get to you is uh, the needle nose pliers. you know. But that's something you can get at any hardware store any Walmart you know look around for that that one's kind of easy to get but all the harder things that you'd have to have to look for uh, send us a message and we'll we'll figure out how to get a kit to you and that'll be awesome so right on I'd like to say thank you guys so much um, we've been on for about an hour and 40 minutes so hopefully this video really really helped you and as soon as we end it it's gonna be published so you guys could rewind fast forward go to your own pace and skill level and kind of follow along and hopefully we answered all the questions for you guys here today uh, hope